Hi, welcome back to this week's vlog. I'm Jared Lindner from the Elite Series. Um, this week we're going to talk about the 8th and 9th stop, which was the New York Swing. Um, pretty much the first term of the year was dominated by Tim Horton. And in doing so, he used, first of all, a fat-free shad. And his key was he, he found a stretch of rocks way outside on a grass flat and the majority of his fish were either caught on this fat-free shad crankbait or on a football head with a crop happy as a trailer. And he drug this really slow until he felt the, the bigger size rocks and gave it a rod quick little pop and the fish were just smoking it. I mean, he, I think he didn't even have to go fishing the last day and he would end up winning. Um, there at Champlain, uh, I finished in 15th and I had two, two pretty solid patterns going. My first of which, I started out every day, um, fished until about noon, as I was throwing a wacky, Berkeley Wacky Crawler, um, wacky rigging it on eight pound fluorocarbon. And my main primary uh, structure was rock piles. And I would go out and get a quick limit of smallmouth um, and they just couldn't resist this. The smallmouth bite wasn't really on per se at that time, but each day I caught you know 20 to 30 smallmouth ranging from a pound and a half all the way up to four and a half pounds just throwing that little Berkeley wacky crawler. Once, uh, once the water warmed up I switched over to a frog, a spro frog in tropical white um, and I was running grass flats and pockets and coves, uh, trimming the legs down. I took the orange out of this one just to make it more realistic, but this is the actual frog I used during New York, that New York tournament at Champlain. And uh, I was rigging on 65 pound, 65 pound test stealth braid line by Spiderwire. And as you can see, it kind of turns white um, just from use. And that doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. The easy way to fix that you just get a, a standard marks a lot black felt tip marker and every foot or so you just go down the line and just kind of mark it just leave a little two and a half to three inch marks along the line and it actually makes that line uh, camouflage and disappear with all the other vegetation and wood whatever you're throwing it around so that's a good tip you know to save you some money and and uh, not have to go through as much braid just because it turns white. Switching over to Lake Erie, uh, which was the ninth event, and uh, Edwin Evers went up to New York and, and won the tournament. And his primary pattern was he was drop shot in rock piles from anywhere from 35 to 50 foot and his main bait was throwing the uh, yum houdini worm and what he was doing was he was bite actually biting this worm down to about uh, three and a half inches and just fishing it wacky rig or sometimes text rigging depending on how tight the, the rocks were grouped up and that was basically it and he caught some monster smallmouth doing that at uh, at Erie, which was my second worst term of the year, I got on a, a reaction bait kind of craze and I was throwing the uh, Jack All Smash Minnow. Um, I caught, caught a lot of fish, I just didn't get no big bites on it like I did in practice. Along with I was throwing a, burning a Picasso half ounce spinner bait over rocks and boulders and anything that was along the shoreline. I didn't figure it out until it was too late and what I should have been doing, which a lot of the top guys uh, were concentrating on, is drop shotting the Berkeley Gulp Gobi, the four inch and the five inch leech. Um, these together combined for, I would say, out of the top 50 checks, I would say at least 40 of the guys were throwing these. Um, 
drop shotting them. Some guys were rigging these gobies on jig heads, fishing them over the rocks real slow, kind of hopping them around. But overall, I screwed up. I should have been throwing these. I had them in my boat and I was an idiot. But anyway, I learned a valuable lesson, and next year when we go back there again, these will be my primary baits.